Passive Indexing for Beginners. Welcome to Stock Strategy Sunday. Now this is a series where we'll walk through different stock strategies in detail, which can be used to successfully build wealth over the long term. Now part of the reason why investing in the stock market can be so intimidating at first is because there's simply so much information and many different types and styles of investing. For instance, you have fundamental analysis, technical analysis, buy and hold, value investing, growth investing, and the list goes on and on. The truth of the matter is that you can find success with almost all of these strategies if you know how they work and execute them properly. With that, in this video, I wanted to start off this series with a discussion of what is likely the most common investment strategy, and certainly one of the most popular today, which is passive investing with index funds. So first off, what exactly is passive index investing? Put simply, it's a buy and hold strategy that involves purchasing funds that are weighted by an index rather than active managers. These index funds are typically well diversified, holding a large selection of securities and come with very low fees, which makes them beneficial for long-term ownership. Now, the most popular variants of these funds are broad market index funds, and these funds aim to own effectively the entire stock market. Now, these index funds were initially popularized by the Vanguard Group, the company founded by late Jack Bogle, which is now one of the largest asset management companies in the world and passive indexing investments are still continuing to grow in popularity. In fact, we're now at a point where the number of indices actually outnumber the number of stocks in the stock market. So passive indexing has really become an investment phenomenon, but how exactly does it work and why has it gained so much popularity? Well, when you're investing, you're typically balancing three variables. Return, or the potential for how much your investments have to grow. Risk, which is the potential for the permanent loss of capital. And cost, which is the commission and fees incurred from your investments. Indexing isn't necessarily revolutionary in terms of either the return or risk provided by the funds, but the key competitive advantages these funds have have over actively managed funds is that they have rock bottom costs. It's been widely documented that these passive index funds have beaten the vast majority of active managers over long periods of time. And the primary reason they've been able to do this is because they have very low costs and trading fees. When investing in a fund managed by an active manager, you have to pay the salary of that manager and their research team, as well as incur all the trading costs from buying and selling stocks within that fund. Now, you aren't billed these expenses directly when you invest. However, it is taken out of the fund, which slightly reduces the value of the shares that you have. Now, these fees are typically expressed in what's called an expense ratio. And for context, the expense ratio of most index funds is less than 0.1%. On the other hand, some actively managed funds can have fees 10 times higher than that at 1% or higher. This is important because costs really matter with investments. If returns are going to be 7 to 8% and you're paying 1% in fees, that might not sound like much, but it makes an enormous difference in the amount that you'll have in retirement. This is part of the reason why Warren Buffett's advice to most average investors is simply to consistently buy a low cost index fund. Buffett says the trick is not to pick the right company. The trick is essentially to buy all the big companies in the S&P 500 and do it consistently. So with all that, what are some of the advantages of using a passive indexing investment strategy? One of the biggest advantages, as we've mentioned, is that they're extremely cost efficient. Typically, most index funds offer rock bottom expense ratios, and most brokerages will allow you to buy them without incurring any commissions or trading costs. This means any money that you would have spent on fees or commissions is invested and working for you instead. Another advantage of index investing is that it's extremely simple. Using a passive indexing strategy doesn't require any extensive monitoring or knowledge, which can allow you to invest without having to spend a significant amount of time monitoring or researching your investments. They can be rebalanced once a year, which makes it very easy to maintain, and most people would be able to manage this by themselves. Another advantage is that over the long run, you will match the market's performance. This means as a consequence, you will likely beat most active fund managers after fees due to the lower cost structure of these index funds. Following this strategy can also limit any emotional investment decision mistakes that you could potentially make in the future. That's because the strategy is extremely simple and only relies on consistently buying more into these index funds, most commonly done through a method called dollar cost averaging. We'll get more into dollar cost averaging in just a bit. Now, with all those advantages, investing with these index funds seems like a pretty good option, but what are some of the disadvantages of using this strategy? 
Well, one potential disadvantage is that you're guaranteed to achieve only average market returns. Now, while historically US stocks have averaged around a 7 to 8% return per year, those levels of return are not necessarily guaranteed to occur in the future. By solely using index funds, you're giving up and missing out the opportunity for outperformance in the future. This could be in the form of high returns from a few superior selected individual stocks or from better management of risk that could reduce losses during down years. It's possible your dividend income might be lower than other strategies more focused on dividends. If sustainable income from dividends is one of the primary goals of your portfolio, there are more effective strategies for achieving a higher level of income at the same or lower risk. Another thing to consider about index funds is that most of them are market cap weighted. This means that there's more weight in the fund towards the larger companies compared to the smaller companies. This means that the fund will be more concentrated in its top holdings and will be more impacted by stock movements of the largest companies. And another disadvantage of index funds is that they don't take into account or adjust holdings based on valuation. This means in periods of market exuberance, index funds could become significantly overvalued leading to much poorer returns in the future. This is exactly what we saw in 2000, where investors in index funds at that point would see negative total returns over the next decade. So now with a better picture of the pros and cons of passive investing with index funds, how would you actually go about to implement this strategy? Well, one of the benefits of this strategy is that it's very simple, which makes it easy to implement in practice. One of the first steps is selecting a brokerage from which you'll purchase the funds from. As mentioned before, Vanguard is an extremely popular option and it's one that I actually use myself. And their index funds typically have some of the lowest expense ratios in the industry and they offer no commission costs for purchasing any of their Vanguard funds. Once you've selected the brokerage which you'll be purchasing the index funds from, you'll then need to select the actual funds which you'll invest in and the proportion that you'll invest in each one. Now this decision making process is known as asset allocation and effectively it's the amount of percentage of your portfolio that you have invested in each asset class. The most common asset classes are stocks, bonds, and cash, and sometimes other investors consider other asset classes like gold or commodities. Most index funds, however, will focus on stocks and bonds. This is an important topic which is worth more discussion, so I've linked a couple videos I've done in the past on this topic in the video description which you can check out at a later time. One of the key things to consider is that the more stocks, or sometimes referred to as equities, that you have within your portfolio, the greater volatility or fluctuations in your portfolio you should expect. One very helpful tool and resource that you could potentially use to get a better sense of both the risks and potential rewards with different asset allocations is a website called Portfolio Charts. Within that website, you can explore the impact of different asset allocations and see how those would have compared historically, both on a return and risk basis. I've done a video on this in the past where you can check out a few example asset allocations and how they performed historically. If you don't know exactly where to start, you could simply do a 50-50 split between stocks and bonds, buying something like the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index, which trades under the symbol VTI, and 50% to a total bond market index, which trades under the ticker symbol BND. Once you have your funds selected and the allocation set, then simply all you need to do is continue to purchase those funds over time. One of the most common and effective strategies of doing this is called dollar cost averaging, where effectively each month or however often you invest, you simply invest the same dollar amount each time and buy as many shares as you can in each fund based on your set proportions and the price of those funds. For instance, when stocks are higher, you'll generally buy less shares of the fund. Conversely, when stocks are down, you'll buy proportionally more shares at that point for that same fixed dollar amount. Dollar cost averaging is one way to spread the risk over a longer period of time, which can allow you to evenly spread out your purchases throughout the year. Then once each year, you can take a look at your portfolio and see how it compares to your initial set asset allocation percentages. If over the course of the year, your asset allocation has drifted a bit and now your portfolio has a larger proportion of stocks than you initially intended, you could sell off some of the stock index funds and invest that into bond index funds to reset the portfolio allocation to your target percentages. Or simply during the next time you dollar cost average, put more of your funds into the bond fund until those percentages reach your target. And that's pretty much it. Passive index investing 
is not really that complicated and when it comes down to it is rather boring. However, that shouldn't be something to deter you as over the long term dollar cost averaging into low cost index funds has proven a very effective strategy for many investors. Now with that, there are some variations you can do to this passive indexing strategy. One of them is to have what are called portfolio tilts. This is where you have a core index portfolio, but a smaller portion of your portfolio is tilted towards a certain sector or industry. For instance, you could have a portfolio tilt towards technology stocks, in which case you have additional investments in certain technology stocks. Some people might also be interested in a small cap tilt where you have some of your portfolio more invested in the companies with smaller market capitalizations. Additionally, someone interested in real estate might have a section of their portfolio specifically for the stocks of real estate investment trusts. Portfolio tilts are completely optional to the passive indexing strategy, but can be one way to personalize the strategy to better fit your investment goals and your risk tolerance. Additionally, over the past years, there's been an increase in interest from what are called robo-advisors. These are effectively companies that offer you a passive indexing strategy, but will automatically do rebalancing for you. I shared my thoughts on that in a video where I called out these robo-advisors as being a scam. Now, they're not a scam in the traditional sense, and the service they do provide to investors is one that can be convenient, admittedly. However, the reason why I called them a scam is because I don't think the long-term cost of the additional fees that these robo-advisors place on your accounts is necessarily worth the benefits that they provide. For instance, if you wanted to build the same portfolio that many of these people are using with these robo-advisors, you can simply go to their website and look up the funds and percentages that are being used in their clients' portfolios, and you can purchase those exact same funds for yourself within your own regular brokerage account without having to incur the extra management fees from these robo-advisors. While most of these fees are only about a quarter of a percent, that adds up significantly as I've demonstrated in that video. If you're pursuing a passive indexing investing strategy, robo-advisors are certainly an option you can consider, but just be cognizant and aware of the impact of that fee over the long term. Overall, passive index investing is one of the simplest and most effective strategies that can work and has worked for many individual investors. It's good for people who don't have the time, knowledge, or interest to research, manage, and monitor their own individual stocks. Dollar cost averaging into a diversified, low-cost portfolio of index funds with a predetermined asset allocation to match your risk tolerance is a good strategy for long-term investment success. While you will receive average market returns and have to have the patience to wait out bear markets, for most people with diligent savings, these returns are more than enough to meet their investment goals. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it a helpful introduction to passive investing and index funds. Feel free to support it by leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more investment content like this in the future. And let me know your thoughts on passive investing and index funds in the comments below. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. My name's Michael and I will see you in the next video.